after this amazing rookie class that w- that we've seen in 2022, you, you know who the highest wiser is in ADP of those rookies? Take a guess. This is funny. Highest riser? Yeah. Purdy? No, uh, sorry. Highest rookie wide receiver. Oh, riser. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say Christian Watson because we just talked about him. Uh, okay. I'm going to say somebody super obscure, mm-hmm. but I don't know who it is. It's Romeo Dubs. Oh, well, not 98.6 was his. Well, Cause he wasn't, I mean, nobody even had, I mean, really was, on, on his radar. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I know it, but just in terms of quantity, that's just funny to me because you're seeing these guys. I mean, some of the highest risers here didn't even produce that much. I mean, well, Dodson, I yeah. Wando or his ACL. Yeah. Um, Romeo Dubs is the wide receiver too on his own offense, he, and he didn't do much. He was a preseason darling. No, like exactly, that's, a lot of the well, he, he had a, he had his little stretch there where he without Watson, where he yep. came in and was was looking the part. He was getting open. They missed him. He dropped a couple. Then he had a couple a little bit of an ankle and was in and out, and you yeah. know didn't really finish too strong. But there there was certainly you know some some promise, and it, the eye the eye test looked pretty decent. He did drop a couple big yeah. ones later in the season, though. Um, no, I I think so too. I I actually and. You know, we're, we're going to get this a spoiler, but I actually like Romeo Dubs in later rounds right now. I see him going in the 13th, 14th round. Like, that's a guy that I'm absolutely going to roster at that point. I, I, I'm confident yeah. that his value is going to maintain. But, not, I mean, at, at some le- I mean, at some point, he's actually flashed a little bit, at least. Like, he's looked, I mean, good. So, especially if Rodgers is there, like, I think it's definitely worth the risk. He's, he's a guy I like. But, in, you know, even over their second year, like the rate for them to maintain their value in terms of w- rookie wide receivers isn't as high as their first year, but they're still good investments. I mean, wide receivers are good yeah. investments in general, yeah. but I mean, typically like dynasty players are pretty patient with letting receivers develop. I mean, we kind of were with CD lamb in terms on a higher scale, but I mean, CD wasn't like producing at the level that we thought he was going to until this year. And, you know, people were patient with him. We see it with Jerry Judy. I think we're too patient with Judy, but Judy's maintained his value because, they're saying, oh, it took, you know, D hop a couple of years. It took blank a couple of years. So they're just good investments. Like, I mean, right. plus you get, the, yeah. you get, you get some injury, you know, love yep. with, with, with Judy kind of, you know, there has been stretches where he's been good and he was, he was, fuck, there was stretches where he was great this year. Um, yep. Yeah. DPJ was that guy uh, this season mm-hmm. who he was just worth a shot, you know, in a, in a nothing burger round in a startup. And, I mean, look where you are now with him. He's actually worth something going up, you know. Yeah, Josh, Chark, how many Chark rounds in ADP? DPJ were, were two of the big ones that were on every late round thing for me. Yeah, yep. and I mean, DPJ actually has at least a little bit of value now where he can be worth something in, you know, a throw-in and a trade. And he's a six-round wide receiver, a six-round pick. And Romeo Dubs, I mean, going into fourth, he's a little bit more valuable in terms of how the NFL will, will view him in years to come. But I mean, that's just, I definitely like your point about Dubs there. He's, he's a guy to look for. John Mechie hasn't stepped on the field. Yeah. Um, in, increase in value a little bit. I think part of that has to do with the fact that Houston's going to be getting a QB a here. QB I mean, and, and maybe I, a new, and obviously a new coach, you know. Yeah. So. And I mean, Bryce Young, if he has that connection with Bryce Young, you could see Mechie skyrocketing in value before he even hits the field. And at that point, you may even be able to get something for him if you ship him off. You know, so I, I'd be looking into getting Mechie as a throw-in in any deal right now. Yeah. So, so who are some of the in this in this draft and in the ADP findings that you guys have had? You know, we're kind of talking about it now. So, you know, who are some of your favorite uh, kind of later round or even just really any round values? I know we talked a little bit of of Connor. I think that's a great one. Um, I think he gets kind of left for dead, and and you know, as long as he's healthy, he looks he looks the part. I mean. Yeah. And I, so I'll, I'm going to look at a draft that I'm doing right now, actually. Um, in terms of uh, this is late. I mean, this is late when you think about it comparatively, but I love Derrick Henry in the eighth round. That is to me, I, I, the man, he's one of one. I know he's deteriorating. Like I know eventually there's going to be a cliff. He, he really is unique in terms of him being able to still be able to produce at that level. So I like him there. Uh, Tyler Lockett is still going past Does the Lockett, 11th round. Real yes, quick, sir. real quick to interrupt, to go back. Does your team have to be going a certain way to take Henry or is it just an, is that an auto pick for you? I don't necessarily think it's an auto pick in the eighth, but once I get to like the ninth, if I saw him in the ninth, I'd probably auto pick him just because I'm fairly confident in his ability to produce next year. And I know come next year, a contender is going to want him and, Someone I, will and, pay I, for and him. I can sell him. So, and I never go into a draft like, okay, I'm contender, I'm rebuild, whatever. And I like to take the value that falls. And there's some risk to taking those older running backs when you're, when you have established that you're more of a rebuild. 
But right. again, it, with a guy like Henry, I think he's an exception because I do still think he'll be a top five running back next year. And I think somebody's going to pay for that higher than an eighth round Sarah pick price. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, Sky Moore is another guy that I think we, we both like, and yep. I mean, he's in the Kansas city offense and he could do something here again. He's, second round wide receiver. They're not going to give up on him that easily. They're like, he's a, he's a Swiss army knife. Really. They can use him in a lot of ways. He went at 11, five in this one that we just did. Is it, I don't know if you have your ADP. That's pretty available. accurate with our, with our ADP. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's going, you like Sky. Yeah, yeah, that, that, see, I, 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 I kind of fell in love with Sky more in the, in some training camp. You know, I liked what he did. I liked, I liked that he was a, a DB and hadn't played a whole lot and kind of played inside and out and was, you know, very versatile and then you get to the chiefs camp where he's doing he's getting handoffs he's doing all sorts of shit and then you get nothing from him so know. you know it, it's a little bit weird it, was he just too green and didn't know what to do or just kept fucking up or why can't he get on the field i'm not sure um but i don't i don't hate the stab second was it i think his regular uh nfl draft stock was was second or third round uh, yeah, he was second. Uh, yeah, because yeah, he went. Round. I think he went right before Alex Pierce. So Sky Moore went after Alex Pierce, the pick after. So the Colts got a bunch of crap for taking like Alex Pierce over in the Sky Moore early fifties. So yeah, I mean, worth it. Still, again, worth a shot and a good investment. And yeah. when you're getting him that late, like again, people are going to give wide receivers the benefit of the doubt there because a lot of older wide receivers here are going to be buys. Mike well, Evans, DeAndre Hopkins is obviously your huge one. I tend to agree with you there. I mean. Do I think DeAndre Hopkins is going to be what he always has been next year? Probably not. But, I mean, whatever position he's going to end up being in next season with, with a new team, like I, I'm willing to bet that he's going to have incredible flexible value with, with, with just as high of a ceiling as he's ever had. Will it be as consistent? Maybe not. Same thing with Mike Evans. Will he be as consistent? Maybe not. But, I mean, he's been, he, he hasn't fallen below 1,000 receiving yards ever in his nine year career. So right. why is he going in the, in the ninth round uh, right now? Well, you know? For, for, you know, we talk about this a little bit on our show, you know, that there is something to be said for the, uh, the court of public opinion. And there are certain guys that just for whatever reason, doesn't matter what they do. They never get the public love. And Mike Evans is one of those guys. There's other guys who, who never do shit and still stay in the good graces of the public. Um, you know, so you know, you know why? Because of age. <laughs> well, age and just even when he was like 26 27 he still like there was a lot of the times where there was just always a yeah but with him and for for really no good reason he you know there there would be seasons where it would be you know big and then nothing and big and nothing but it was like you know you, he's still producing for the most part um you know maybe That's, shit maybe two ends up in in tampa if tommy goes down to to, to miami that would you know, be yeah, awesome that, that was uh-huh i would 100 percent take yes, that sir godwin is godwin is a guy like that too and mike williams is a guy like that you can keep, mike williams. like every year you can get mike williams like eighth or more and look <laughs> he I know, can't catch a break and i know he nine, eight this was one. not good but but yeah and but nine eight like i'm confident enough in his i mean you can you can tell when he's on the field and he's healthy. Like number one, Justin Herbert. He had like, a dominant ball. stretch in this season and then got hurt again. Yeah, I mean, he his value there, like the risk is or the reward is much higher than the risk. And and he's a guy that's like that every single year. So I like him every single year. And Amari uh, Cooper. Amari Cooper is a good one. I'm looking into like the really late I think round. Amari Cooper like, might have had just like one of his best years ever, super fucking quietly. Um, yeah, with, with a backup yeah, quarterback back. for most of that. Uh huh. And I'll tell you, actually fun landing spot here for D-Hop. What if D-Hop went to Cleveland? Reunited Cleveland with Deshaun. Because Deshaun re hated them trading D-Hop. Like, that would be awesome. And I think yeah. that could actually help Amari. I think that would, if that hurts anyone, it would be DPJ. Because Amari is just too good of a receiver to all of a sudden take a production hit if D-Hop went in there. I think they'd help each other out. You see two um, real solid receivers producing at a high level like we've seen. We've never seen this before until this year. But, I mean, the top 18 receivers – uh, and total points on the season, they five. There are like five duos there: Mike Evans and Godwin. You had Tyreek and Waddle. Then there's um, it's all about uh, the duos, baby. Here. AJ Brown and Devonte. Um, and Jamar. T and Jamar. And then was there was there one more there too? I mean, Mike Williams and Keenan when they're healthy and on the field. Yeah, when they're healthy, yeah. they're a good. They were both too. wide receiver ones last year. Yeah, like, yeah, but the, I don't know what it is with with Amari Mike Williams. I mean, Maybe it's because they went so high in the draft. Like they both went, I think. They they both went top ten. I think Amari went one hundred four, and Mike Williams went one hundred seven in the NFL. Maybe people are just still low on them because they were never Justin Jefferson. Like like right. I, I don't know, but they're 
very reliable oh, fantasy you, assets. They're just not they're not sexy, so they don't they don't get the the big you know. The, there's nothing sexy about them. They're, but they they just fucking score points, and at the end of the they're, day, we're trying to score they're, points. They're, yeah, that's I I absolutely agree with that. A couple quarterbacks here, like in the 14th. Look, I if I'm at the 14-10, like which is I'm looking at another draft I'm doing, and I took I, I'm taking Zach Wilson at the 14-10, not because yes, I like Zach Wilson, like not because I believe in his ability as an NFL quarterback, not because I want him long term on my team, but I know you mentioned him earlier and how you were able to move him. There's going to be another opportunity to move Zach Wilson, and somebody will pay higher than a 14th round startup pick for Zach Wilson. And the re- obviously the reason he's going to get another opportunity in the NFL is because of his draft capital. And because I, I just don't think I, the Jets might be done with him. I don't know. But I think wherever he goes, he's going to get another shot. And, and you see it with these situations all the time. If somebody gets traded, their value shoots up, right? I mean, right. if somebody if somebody is named the starter, or, or even if Jordan if, Love, even if there's <laughs> like a training camp video or something that comes out, yes. their, their value shoots up. We are, uh, the, the community is so reactive about stuff like this. It's impossible for me not to take him because I'm like, I know there's going to be yeah. another selling point. Zach Wilson's not left for dead. Like, He's, I think he sucks, and I don't think he's going to amount to very much in his career. I don't – Yeah, uh, remember maybe that, that's a hot take, but – Remember that training camp stuff with uh, – there, there were two that I remember. is Trey Lance throwing a ball to Brandon Ayuk. Every mm-hmm. – And Lance's stock went up immediately. Yeah. And then Tua, Tua underthrew Tyreek, which Mahomes underthrew Tyreek all day. <laughs> Everyone underthrows Tyreek because he's electric. He is the cheetah. That's his right. nickname. Like, <laughs> of course you're going to underthrow Tyreek. That was so dumb. It, it, and, and that's when I bought Tua. Yeah. I, I sold or I bought Tua for Elijah Moore and KJ Osborne. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 so so when this guy like that, like Tannehill is also good in the 14th, 15th round mm-hmm. because I think he's going to play somewhere too. And he's just a quarterback. Jordan Love will go up in value. He will. If, if Rogers leaves or if oh, Love for gets sure. an opportunity elsewhere, like there's, there's no risk in investing in Jordan Love because it, it, there's only benefit. There literally is only benefit. Yeah. That, that's so. big, big code took him in the 14th and that's his, he, he's been pulling that move for the last two years. He'll just take Jordan Love even later, but you know, last year, 20th yeah. round or whatever, but just yeah, waiting for that opportunity to, to either get traded or for Aaron Rodgers to leave and, and get the spike. And, you know, I don't even give a shit about Jordan Love, just capitalize <laughs> on the spike. Um, you know, yeah. Madison was a guy like that for me. I would traded a lot of Matt for Madison last year when everybody, the court of public opinion kind of, they, they were, they were really hot and heavy. And then he really hasn't been doing much. And Dalvin got the lion's share of everything these last two years. I, ca- I, I tried to grab some, some, some Madison because there was a lot of hype on Madison. And I feel like when that, when, when he does become a free agent and go somewhere else, there's going to be an instant spike and then see ya. Um, that's, that's a great, that is, that is a great thought actually i i madison is not even <laughs> a lot of times he's not even on my on my radar just because yeah i took so him at 14 irrelevant. nine here just to, just but, out of principle yeah no absolutely <laughs> that's good and so i think there's two things you're looking at when you're picking these late rounds like number one you're looking for somebody that's going that like is going to produce and is getting shorter for some reason so i'm confident that when zach Ertz comes back he's going to be able to produce and i'll be able to start him as a tight end like if i need to he's going in the 17th round like and i don't know where, where did he go in this draft but in the draft i did he went in the 17th like that's it's for, it's free. I anything past yeah. like the 16th round, I'm not looking at that as serious enough investment to where. Obviously, if you don't hit on somebody there, it's no big deal. But right. that's to me, that's somebody that's going to come in and produce that I can use. And then the other guys, like you have said, and I think it sounds like you take very similar strategy as we do. You know, you're looking for guys that at some point or another are going to spike back up in value. Like, and then you can sell them. Like at that point. You're, le- you're less betting on what you think about players and your own personal opinions on players and who you like and dislike. Because if you play that game with players this late, odds are you're going to miss most of the time. Like, I mean, right. or, you know, you have just as good a chance of missing as you do hitting. But, you know, there are a lot of times you can look at these players and be fairly confident that they're going to spike up in value again. And at that point, you're playing the market. You're buying them while they're low. You're going to wait until they spike again and you're going to sell them off. And there, I think they're are quite a few of those guys down here. I think Jordan Love is a good one. He was a good one last year. I took a bunch of him last year because I knew, yeah. I don't know if you heard this, but Rodgers, when he was on the McAfee show this week, said that, like, yeah. look, they drafted my replacement. They call, I mean, he, I think, I think the word in the building is that Love is the guy there, which will he do well? I don't know. 
But when he is the guy yeah. there, you're, you're selling. I mean, you're you're selling him at his high point, or I don't know. I could see an you argument. Need one guy in well. the league to fucking be interested in Jordan Love's op- potential opportunity of of him even quote unquote buying low on Jordan Love because you know he he's buying him low the second time. Basically, you're not getting ridiculous market value, but you're getting way more than what you just paid. So that you know he he's buying into the market already much higher than what you did, and you know for but for we don't even know exactly what Jordan Love is. So I I, I absolutely love that. Right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, once we once we get a little later in here, you know, I like uh, rookies are still available. I took in the 12th, 13th and 15th round. I took three rookies strictly out of, you know, again, we can either draft guys who we are confident with that we will score points in our lineup like Jacoby Myers. You know, nobody loves Jacoby Myers, but he's a fucking you could throw him. This is a start wide receiver, three wide receivers. I could throw him in my wide receiver three spot every single week and be yep. fine with that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm all right. Or even a flex. I mean, he's not going to he scored finally was scoring touchdowns this year. Um, He's a free agent, so we don't know where he's going to end up, but he's he's productive. Or we can take guys like Madison and guys like Love or and, a, you know, a, a bunch of rookies here. Like I took Hendon Hooker. I mean, Basically, that the thought process there is like, all right, which which quarterback here after the NFL draft has the best chance of getting the highest draft capital? And it was Hendon Hooker was the guy left there. And if it's day two, then I'm going to I'm probably going to immediately get an upswing in value from, you know, 12, nine. If, let's say the Colts draft Hendon Hooker in the second round. You know, I, I think everybody likes the Colts for the most part. We just need a quarterback, um, you know, just using right. that because I know you guys are Colts guys. If that happens, then, you know, I like the idea, whichever quarterback would, you know, for me in this draft, the names next to the rookies weren't as important. It was the idea of the rookie um, kind of because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But the idea exactly. of Hooker, the, yeah. the basically whichever it would, would it be the friends of the state quarterback, would it be, you know, DTR, I'm not saying he's going to. Will it be Hooker? Whoever is going to be the guy with the highest capital would have been the guy that I'm trying to take in that quarterback thing. And then Chase Brown, another running back, you know, upside potential there. Uh, you know, had had a big year in you know playing against Indiana and and those those kind of teams. I was at, I was at that game. He was nuts. I was yeah. I was like five rows off the field watching him in person was crazy. Like. Yeah. I actually, and I actually like him. I mean, it, yeah. right now in a lot of in a lot of rookie mocks, he's going late second, maybe not even hitting the second. He's going early third sometimes. Yeah, and I, I think that's, he's young. His value is going to be inflated. Like yeah. that's that's yeah. exactly right. how you've got to approach these later rounds. Like it's right. it's less about you know. Yep. Now, and, not and to say that I don't have my guys that I go for a lot of times in these mid late mid rounds here. Like you know, I do. Sure. I always, oh yeah, I think yeah. at that point, if you have your guys go for them at that point because there's right. little to no risk in terms of value if you miss on them you miss on them whatever like i've never I, been I mean, able I, to quit paris campbell like i'll, I'll always put paris <laughs> campbell on my team like you know oh, i just funny i liked what I've could been, be and then when he's healthy man and he's he's decent he's a good player like, he was he had some good flashes this year well, well he's we'll still going sure. I, i've drafted probably of the three startups i think i've done i drafted two paris campbell and it's yeah. not because i and i always caution people as a cold i'm like look paris campbell can't stay healthy but paris campbell should be going above the 17th round, like, and he's still going that low. So and he's a free agent. Swing it back. Yeah. I, why? Yeah, who why knows not? what situation like, he could end up in? And and he's a guy now. I think people are just too scared to do anything with him. But when you think about it, and you look at what he did this year with with Matt Ryan, like, I mean, yeah. that that has to be taken with a grain of salt. But he at that value, absolutely. Yeah. I I I totally get that. I mean, and how how old? And if you he? kept taking Paris Campbell, it finally paid off, and you might have actually been able to sell him this year, yeah. like if you needed to. He could have at least been 25. in a deal to get you over the top, you know? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So that 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 was it. Like it, for him, and he was going last year, like past the twenty first round, I think. So and that's again, yeah. That's those guys are little investment. You're essentially then those young tight ends. Actually, those those young tight ends are 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 big. For, for us personally, I, I think if you can kind of get those guys invested in pack package them and then, uh, ship them off, like, and, and get one of those higher end tight ends, like we've seen it before. There's so much fluctuation in value for those young tight ends because anytime they have a game where they go off, they're like, Oh, they're a next, they're that next elite tight end. You know, they're going to expand that bear landscape. It's not going to be bear anymore because we're going to have, you know, 12 to 16 high producing tight ends. No. No, 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 you're not. I'm I took sorry. In, in my last startup in the 13th through 15th rounds. I think I took McBride. Maybe it's 14 through 17. McBride, 
Chig and Daniel Bellinger. Yeah, because 100%. I know, like, dude, when we're guys, in tight end premium and we get to a certain point in the draft and there's a chunk of those guys hanging around, I'll hammer those all day long because everybody yeah. needs a tight end. And like you just said, whenever they're making, you know, Bellinger had a stretch this year, Chig had a stretch this year, you know, people yep. would be open, you know, yep. maybe you're not getting you know, able to just solo trade those guys. But those guys, just like we talked about with Paris Campbell, can get a, a big deal over the top. Like, hey, I'll throw in this tight end down here, you know, who, you know, you yeah. don't really have a tight end. This guy could be the next uh -huh. big thing. And this could this could help me get, you know, a, a, a bigger player, a bigger fish. Yeah, so I, I know it's so hard to predict what tight ends are actually going to end up getting over that almost unbreakable hump to be an elite tight end eventually in their career. But I have a question for you mm -hmm. as an unbiased watcher of Jelani Woods. No, you got to buy do you think it's about just, him. I, it's just, I mean, he's got, he got like nine targets one game. That's your rear right. and then game. Nothing. And, and then athleticism. nothing. Right. 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 But I mean, his, he is athletically, he's a freak. Right. Like it's you can bizarre just see it on watching the field. He's out of size. He's, Six seven, he, he was a quarterback, so it's like he hasn't even been doing this all that, you know, playing tight end all that long. Um, and yeah. you know, we're we've been especially when Frank Reich was there, I was, I was, I had oh, I've been dying for them to just get a tight end because it's like we've seen Frank be in systems where the tight end can be so prevalent, and I just I kept buying into Colts tight ends and, and never getting there. Now, I did I grabbed some Jelani Woods, but he would certainly be a guy in these later rounds where I'm absolutely putting Jelani Woods on the field because of the athleticism and that you know, the reactionary. Maybe I end up keeping Jelani Woods because I end up falling in love with him too. That's not out of the question question from taking these guys um yeah. you know i'm not i'm not I, I try not to fall in love but every once in a while you get a guy who you just you can't quit um but no I, I super athletic and we we just need a we need a quarterback and a, and a system and and the offensive line was a really big letdown for you know the colts this year yeah. um yeah. so I, I used i had a lot of faith in ballard i'm you know it's mostly Ursa. i think that guy just is the fucking worst um so. Oh dang! We <laughs> hey whoa, time out. You can't talk about Jimmy like that when you got us on. Like he's listen. Do I, I want to do I want to hang out and smoke a blunt with Jimmy? Sure. Do I want to run on my team? I don't know that I do. Yeah, but I mean, for the most part, he's listen. I know he comes across as a crackhead, but in reality, he's not really a crackhead anymore. Like he, not anymore. he's sober, <laughs> and I, and and for the most part, I mean, he has stayed out of the operations of. Yeah. He's gotten a really bad rap from this last year. In reality, like in terms of his, you know, interaction with the community, in terms of the team's success, in terms of, you know, what we've seen from him over the last 20, it's, it's really been, I mean, ideal. this has been out of the ordinary. He kind of went crazy yeah. and lost his mind. And I mean, how can you, can you really blame him? I mean, we all lost no, our mind as no. Colts fans. Who loses an Andrew Luck out of nowhere? Right. Yeah, that, that's hard of my thing. And I think, I mean, if you think from, from his thought process, it's like, dude, we just lost. We lost Andrew. I still call him every day. I'm still calling Peyton Manning to see if he can coach for us. Like, what are we going to do? Yeah. We, we went from two Super Bowl caliber MVP level QBs and, and like, where, where are we at now? We're, we're, we're selling away picks for Carson Wentz who, and we're, we're selling away picks and money for dying QBs and Matt Ryan and Philip Rivers. Like, let's just blow up this thing. And, and, yeah. and see what we can do. So I, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, if you, if you talk to, you know, former players and stuff, they all speak very highly. They, of they love him. I, yeah. He's, he's just, he is a character. I don't know. Screen. I don't know it about his so dynasty value fun. though. I don't, I don't know if I'm drafting <laughs> in the top five rounds. Well, I, I, just, I guess it was more like, I felt very strongly about the Colts leadership and brass. And I just feel like it's kind of unraveled a little bit in the last couple of years where I'm a little less, I'm a little more skittish on, on the Colts than I, than I was. Yeah, that's understandable. And honestly, I think we would both say that the, the the locker room and the reputation of the Colts being some really talented team that's really tight knit, it died with Carson Wentz. Yeah. It really you, did. I think that's where it started. Carson Wentz sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I mean I cannot stand him. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there I mean, are a lot that, of things. You know, it just, just hasn't been it hasn't been great over there. Do you I mean do you guys like Jelani or you're not you're not sold on him or so Nathan I am, Nathan is oh, so you used to talk yeah. about like you, you can't Smith. love a player too much. You can't get attached and Nathan yeah. is attached. I, I would I'm I'm looking to maybe package and sell Jelani Woods. I'm not attached to him in so, Dynasty. I'm attached to him in the NFL. My gripe my Colts. gripe with oh. Jelani was number one, I did not like how the Colts were using their tight ends in previous years. 
So I was, I just thought it was kind of a a ruse and like, yeah, look, they're bringing in this guy. It was a total Colts pick, by the way. I hated that they spent, my thing was, I hated that they spent their third round pick on Jelani Woods. Like, I have all the team needs that we had. We, we drafted him. Are you serious? Like, we've got, Granson's not, like, nothing. Mo, I use Mo Alley Cox plenty. Like, why do we need another one of these? So that was yeah. really my gripe. But then, you know, the main one in Dynasty, like, was that I don't see it from the Colts tight ends ever. Now, that could change because they're going to have a new scheme. They're going to have a new right, coaching staff. Right. Like, I, that, yeah. that is going to open my mind up a little bit. But Nathan's unhealthily obsessed with Johnny Woods. It's actually <laughs> crazy. I, I, hey, I liked him before he was even on the Colts. All right, we were at the Combine. We, we're going to go to the Combine again this year. We cannot wait. But th- when, when we were looking at our tight ends, we were like, okay, McBride, number one, easily uh, on our list. Dulcich, a close second. And then Jelani Wood. It was like, how is this man moving the way he is at yeah. this size? Like 6'7", 250. And then he got if the, the Colts could get this guy, I know he, but again, it, as, as a blocker, I, I totally understood the pick from the Colts perspective. It's like you have an elite running back. If you're going to be running 12 personnel a bunch and having, you, you know, seven blockers for Jonathan Taylor, why not go for Jelani Woods? And then seeing him produce in the passing game was something I never really expected. And now it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. So pretty, pretty cool. I'm, yeah, I'm, he, I can't talk about the Colts anymore. It's going to give me <laughs> nausea. I, he is at least one of those guys who I think that, you know, we talked about the court of public opinion that if, if, if he, when he flashes, it's going to look special. So there, I, I think that the, the public would really latch on to Jelani Woods uh, in a hurry. Uh, so probably, yeah, yeah, I think there's some, some upside there. Um, some of these other quick late, late round guys would be kind of single Terry. I like him being a free agent, 15th, 16th round. Sure. Um, Herbert in here and the 14th round. I think that's that's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, and then Gasecki, if we're going to throw a tight end out there, I mean, he's he's produced at a high level. He just didn't – he wasn't in the plan, um, you know, and he, he's about to be a free right. agent. So I think, I think there's a, a nice little buy opportunity um, for Gasecki there. 